Hello and welcome. Today I'm looking at the Powerbuilt Citation. I don't know about you, but the last time I got a Citation, my automotive insurance went up. I need to go back to the 70s and tell Powerbuilt. It's not a good, it's not, it's not a good name. 1973, lovely vintage. Let's put it on the chopping block and have a closer look. Real quick, we're going to talk about some of the identification features on the club, and then I'm going to move through the condition of the club and my thoughts. Power built right here, decal along the top line. There's a little arrow right here. They're almost lined up. Red face insert with a bullseye pattern. This is a slotless screw. So this is actually a screw around a little black dot here on the face insert. Solid persimmon. The citation sole plate. So citation one, the horseshoe, four screw blob, ghost shaped insert right here so you can see the little arms right here the two eyes on the ghost and you know just pretty stock standard bog standard citation from the 70s we're looking at a little pin right here for the shaft serial number the brass weight on the back so there's an hb in there not sure if you're going to be able to see it there's a little clear plug right here hb which is almost centered Come on, it's not even, all right, maybe not even close to being centered, but they tried. Uh, the brass insert or the brass weight on the rear is visible from the top line. Genuine persimmon. Moving it to the whipping right here, we have a two gold ring. Is that gold? Silver? Kind of hard to see through my viewfinder. Maybe it's silver with some yellowing plastic around it. Not really sure. Either way, two rings right there. Stepped steel shaft with a Pro Power label on it and a power built grip. Condition, uh, this is something I would watch. And again, this isn't a recommendation. This is just my documenting my thoughts, thinking out loud here. I like woods like this because I feel like I can play them and I'm not, I'm not worried about damaging a priceless piece of museum quality golf equipment, right? This screw obviously hasn't been seated properly, which means the sole plates probably come off, which means this probably needs some work. It looks like there's some unsealed wood right here. And it looks like there's a crack, which is starting to propagate down here through the whipping, past the whipping towards the serial number right here. Not sure if that's going to show up. But that's something I would keep an eye on, because if that propagates all the way down to the sole plate, then this head's going to start falling apart and off the shaft, at which point that's a problem. So kind of something to watch, but something I might be willing to play. So let's move outside today and see how I feel about this club on the range. Cue the range. This is the same range session where I hit the Callaway Big Bertha. We'll see how we do with the power built citation. The brass weight in the back builds confidence. It reminds me of all the modern tech that they're building into these new drivers, but they knew about it back then. It's not like there's any kind of <laughs> I topped it. When I started this channel, I made a decision. I'm not going to filter it. If I have a crappy shot, walk it off, vintage golfer. Just walk it off. Pace it off. It's okay. How many people have done that on the first tee? I know I've done it several times. When Okay, so like I was saying, that it's not a secret. You know, you want to move the weight off that face. So obviously, back in the 70s, they knew that as well, even with these wooden persimmon drivers. So there's lots of technology in these drivers. That was a much better shot. Ever so slight of a draw. I'm looking at the flags for some wind. It looks like it was that was a pretty reasonably straight shot. Uh, normally, I normally hit a slight cut with my driver, my Titleist 910 that I normally play. So that would probably have been left for me, just the way I aim at my shots. So that's things I look for when I'm on the range, just shot shape and stuff. But the driver felt excellent. So not only do they have the technology visible there, it also does very well. Oh, right by that truck. Obviously, I'm not going to... We don't hit trucks because I can't carry the ball that far, but it's always fun just to watch the trucks moving in the background. That one was pretty far, right? I'm looking... The flags are moving just a little bit. Wind from the left. Just a tiny bit. Probably more my strike than that <laughs> minimal breeze. With modern drivers... It really is like almost, oh, dragonfly, buzz me. The world is their toilet, those dirty dragonflies. That one looked pretty thin. 
glad I didn't top it. Better than that first one, as long as I hit it on the face. So the club, if you hit it anywhere near the face of the club, feels amazing. It's wonderful. There's something about a solid persimmon wood that just sends pleasure up your hands and your arms to your neck and face and you're just like wee it's a happy club i really am happy with the performance of this club as well as the looks and the feel the only thing i would change really is maybe the grip and i wish the head were in a little bit better condition but that's all just contingent on whatever you can find out there so for me if i find a good one of these i would definitely consider it there's nothing about this that makes me not desire it in my 70s vintage set. Lovely, lovely. This is the good citation, not the bad kind of citations. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I am the Vintage Golfer.